I think you muted yourself because uh, we can't hear you. Okay, let's start again, shall we? <laughs> hey everyone, so lovely to see so many new faces and familiar faces as well. I can see the numbers going up. We've had a lot of people sign up for this class. I just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Tanya and this is a jelly arts class. So today we are gonna be doing a lot of gel printing. And while I'm waffling on, uh, if you could let me know in the comments section whether you've done gel printing before, um, if you're familiar with gel printing or if you're experienced, just let me know what sort of levels of experience you're at. And I'll keep talking and answering questions as well as well as much as I can. Uh, today in the chat, we have uh, Liz who works for Jelly Arts. She'll be sharing some links. And if there's any questions that I've missed, she might stop me and ask. Uh, we've also got my fellow brand ambassador, Marsha Walk, who will be also helping me answer any questions I miss in the chat as well. So if you've got any questions, let's keep this class really interactive because I love chatting with you guys and no question is silly at all. Just ask me, just ask. Um, I'm happy to help with all sorts of beginner and uh, experience questions or if there's something like really uh, like a strange question that I don't know the answer, maybe Marsha can try, but between us, we can figure things out. So what we're gonna be doing today is we are going to be printing on gel printing on fabric. So today we are going to be uh, printing on tote bags. So I've just uh, flipped this over to show you that this is a tote bag. And Michael's has a variety of uh, tote bags available on their website. I'm, if you can't tell from my funny accent, I'm based here in the UK. So I'm basically using uh, what I had available, uh, but I will talk you through materials as best as I can. Um, I uh, adore printing on fabric. And uh, so I've, I've done some block printing on fabric as well. So I will give you some advice on best practices on things that I've learned that have gone well, things that have not gone well either. And uh, if you've uh, uh, got any questions, just leave them in the chat. And let me switch my uh, cameras around so that we can get on with some gel printing, finally. So you should be able to see my, um, my desk now. I have two of our jelly arts gel plates on here. Let me just take these tools off for now. So this, this big girl is our eight by 10 gel print. She's big, she's beautiful, unapologetic, and she's probably one of my most used gel plates. Uh, it's transparent, it's squidgy, almost like really hard gelatin. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone as well. And she's, it's soft. Both the gel plates are soft. So this is the five by seven inch and this is the eight by 10 inch. So you can see them both like size comparison as well. So these are probably my most used gel plates. And I'm gonna, I have both of them on here because I just wanna show you that, you know, it's okay to have more than one gel plate out on your surface uh, when you're doing some printing. Because sometimes I like to use the gel plates as palettes. So this is a surface that, as you can see, these, are, these babies are really well loved. They're slightly stained, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with them because I've looked after them. So I've cleaned them after uh, a gel printing session. Sometimes I have been naughty and I've left paint on but I do clean them and give them a deep clean every once in a while with either some baby oil or some water and or some um, uh, just a microfiber cloth or a baby wipe. Use whatever you have. 
So, so do not have mediums or roller. We'll have to try and remember. Okay. Okay, no problem. What we're gonna be talking about is I'm gonna be giving you guys options, different options. Um, so the these are the gel, uh, gel plates that we're working with. These are the mini tools, which uh, look deliciously grubby right now uh, because they are also very, very well loved. They're covered in paint, but if you wanted to, you can clean them as well. If you soak them in a mixture of Murphy's oil and water, and this should basically slide right off if you needed to. So uh, paints that we're using today is, I'm not using very expensive paint. I'm using uh, acrylic paint. This is the Decoart Americana Premium acrylic paint. You can use any acrylic paint that you have. And uh, because we're going to be printing on fabric, I'm using Liquitex fabric medium. And basically what you do is you can mix your uh, fabric medium. Let me just switch my camera around quickly, sorry. So you can mix your fabric medium with your paint of choice, with any acrylic paint. And basically what it does is it makes the paint a little bit more flexible so that it doesn't crack when it's on your fabric. And uh, you can either use this or you can use uh, the golden uh, GAC 9000, I believe it's called, which is also available on Jelly Arts as well, uh, to create your fabric medium, create your fabric paint. You can buy fabric paint as well, uh, but make sure that you're not buying puffy fabric paint uh, when you're buying paints on the Michaels website, because puffy paint will not spread as well on a gel plate. So does the Liquitex acrylic work well? Is it a fluffier type of paint? Yes, you can use the Liquitex as well. The Liquitex personally is, uh, the soft body is one of my favorites to use. Is there a medium that you can use on silk? Uh, on silk, I've never tried gel printing on silk, but you can try. I don't know how washable it will be on silk. Um, but you can definitely try and you can use silk paints as well. But silk paints, I believe are runnier as well. So when you're putting them on your gel plate, they might bead up, but I am no expert. Uh, at the end of the day, you can try. Uh, the only thing that we don't suggest using on a uh, gel plate is anything sharp, anything hot, and don't use uh, photo paper at all. And if there's something else, like a big no-no that I'm missing, Marsha will type it in the chat as well. So what is the material of the jelly tools? The jelly, the gel printing tools there, they're basically plastic as well, but they're kind of flexible. So they're not sharp. So they won't harm your gel plate at all. So don't use anything like a blade uh, or anything sharp that might leave permanent marks on your gel plate. So sometimes what I've done is I've accidentally left like a tool sitting on my gel plate. And if you leave it on there for a couple of hours, you might have like a slight impression of the tool left on your gel plate. But the gel plate is made of a material that is self-leveling. So that means that it will disappear after a little while. UPO paper does not work either. Uh, you can use UPO paper. It's just certain kinds of UPO paper that don't work as well. I would also personally would recommend the graphics uh, synthetic mediums as well, which are available on the Michaels website. If you wanted to do like use UPO paper type of uh, uh, substrates. Okay, so for our beginners, before we start, let me just do a basic print and just show you guys what actually gel printing is. So let's, like enough of me talking, right? So first of all, we're going to do, we're going to do just a straight on uh, gel print, print. So I've just got some acrylic paint on here. 
uh, some Americana. Uh, so everything that I'm using is Decor Americana Premium. So this is called, here comes the fun part, trying to pronounce these, Dioxazine Purple. This is a really nice dark purple. And just for fun, I'm going to add in another color as well. And as you can see, I don't have that much paint on here because a little goes a long way. This paint that I used is called Cobalt Teal Hue. And I'm working, this surface that I'm working on, this is just some construction paper, nothing fancy. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to roll out my paint. And what I'm doing is I'm not moving my brayer back and forth. I'm rolling and then lifting. And then I'm just going to continue and blend that second color as well. And a little paint goes a long way. You have to learn how much paint to use. So I'm using one of the mini tools and I'm just going to create a quick design on here while the paint is still wet. And I'm going to take some paper and I will pull a print. So this action where I am basically rubbing the back of the paper so that the paint transfers onto uh, the paper. This is called pulling a print. And you can use a barren, you can use a, a brayer as well. It's about personal preference. I'm just a very tactile person and I love how paper feels underneath my hands. So, so I use just about the right amount of paint. There's not that much paint on there. In fact, it's actually dry. And there's my first print. So this is basically printing on paper. What we're doing is we're just adding in an extra step by making our paint uh, fabric friendly. And, uh, you know, just printing directly on fabric. There's just a couple of things that you need to keep in mind when you're printing on fabric. Um, but we will talk about that as we go along. So this is basically gel printing in a nutshell. And uh, you can use all sorts of things uh, to for printing. You can create your own stencils. You can use commercial stencils as well. You can use string. Uh, you can use food packaging as well. And pretty much if you're like me, you're going to turn into a, a mad woman and start collecting materials to think about what kind of texture they're going to make on a gel plate. But we're going to try and use all of these recycled materials in our printing as well. So, I mean, it's, it's just these, these tools. You've got these different kinds of uh, like edges to them so that you can make all sorts of designs. You don't have to do a swirly one. You can just go like da, 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 da. But we'll, we'll have a play. We will have a play. And if there's any colors you want me to use, in, in particular, any color combinations you like, just let me know. I'm game. We're going to have fun today. So this is basically gel printing on paper. Easy peasy. And pretty much you're going to have like a giant pile of papers because this hobby is very, very addictive. You have been warned. So this was the five by seven that I was using. And I'm just gonna lay this to the side for now. And I'm gonna talk about fabric now. So the personally, the kind of fabric that I like printing on is cotton. And there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind when you're printing on cotton is, is that uh, uh, you might need to shrink it before you print on, print on it if you want to machine wash it. If you don't want to wash it, then you don't necessarily have to use fabric medium. You can just use acrylic paint. I mean, it'll be our secret. Who am I gonna tell, right? So you can just use acrylic paint directly on to your fabric if you're not planning on washing it. But if you want to machine wash it, hand wash it, then you definitely need some kind of either, uh, 
the two that I, I like using the most are this Liquitex one. This is the fabric medium. And then there's a golden GAC 900, I think it's called. Uh, all the links will be shared in the comments section as well. Um, so you can, or you could use fabric paint that is especially formulated to use on fabric. Now, second thing, don't be like me and not iron, <laughs> not iron your fabric before you start. So if you're fussy about things like that, um, if you're using cotton, I would say shrink it because cotton shrinks after uh, you put it in water and dry it. Uh, shrink it and then iron it afterwards so that it's nice and pristine that you have a nice smooth surface to print on. Um, but I haven't had time to uh, to iron my fabric, but never mind. We this is a zero judgment zone, so I might be making some mistakes today. Uh, you might learn from them, um, or I might learn something new as well today. So it might be a big surprise. So I am just going to get my fabric. There's a couple of things you need to do uh, before you start. Now, because this is a tote bag and a tote bag obviously has two sides. Now, if you're going to be printing on one side, you don't want the paint to seep into the other side, if that kind of makes sense. So what you need to do is you need to do a little bit of preparation before you print on a tote bag. But if you're just printing on some fabric, uh, you don't have to do this. Uh, sometimes printing on fabric, it helps to have something soft underneath. But to me, that's not a big deal. Um, you can either have like a clean gel plate underneath and then you're doing your stamping on top because we're gonna be using our gel plates as kind of like giant squishy stamps if that kind of makes sense so let's do some preparation uh before we start and uh uh maybe liz or marsha can unmute themselves and let me know if there's any questions in the meanwhile while i do my preparations so, there is one question from before um do you recommend printing on t-shirts and maybe you could compare the two versus printing on the tote bag versus gel printing on it uh, t-shirt. Yep, you can print on a t-shirt as well. Uh, again, if it's like a, a polyester cotton mix, then that would take the paint well. Um, it depends on the fabric of the t-shirt, whether it's 100% polyester, uh, like with, with the Liquitex one, uh, it says that you don't need to heat set this. So sometimes I, I believe the golden one needs heat setting, uh, but Marsha can probably, Marsha probably has the GAC 900 and she might be able to correct me. Um, and I, I think, I think you, it will be better to wash it inside out. And because this might be like a, a delicate layer, you, it will be better to hand wash it as well. So you were concerned about the, uh, was it Ellen who asked this question? Yes, it was. Okay. A Ellen, I would suggest is, is that you do like a patch test and you do your research into uh, what kind of fabric medium to get uh, before you commit to, you know, wearing something. Because I know some people can definitely uh, be allergic to certain chemicals. So it's it's entirely up to you. Just be careful uh, with whatever mediums you're using. So Marsha's just confirmed that the Golden GAC 900 needs to be heat set. Um, I like both of them personally. Personally, I like both of them. And personally, when I am doing gel printing or painting on fabric, I don't tend to wash these things. So I. Uh, I don't really bother about these things, but I did do a lot of research for you guys because I know everyone's different. So these bags that I've made, I'm going to be giving them away as uh, gifts to friends and family. So uh, let's get on with our uh, fabric printing. So I, I just have some thick cardstock 
um, that I'm going to put in on the inside of my bag so that acts as a barrier so that the paint doesn't uh, seep in on the other side of my bag. Can everyone hear me all right? Yep, we can hear you great, Tanya. I don't wash in advance. So. Yeah, that's what I yeah. talked about before, Carolyn, is, is that um, if you if you plan on using, if you plan on washing your uh, whatever surface, whatever fabric you're printing on, especially if it's cotton, you need to pre-shrink it. Um, see, I, I grew up in Pakistan and you basically, uh, when I was growing up, you would have to pre-shrink your clothes before you took them to the tailor. So I, I don't know if you guys can tell, but you can tell by like a slight shadow that I have put my paper inside there. So basically that's to protect the other side as well. So there's another couple of things that you need to keep in mind that try not to put too much paint on your gel plate because if it seeps through and it sticks to your card, uh, your card stock, then you will, it might rip and it might make a mess. Sometimes you can just leave it in there, let it dry if it's sticking too much and then you can peel it off afterwards. Again, don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> I'm just sharing things that I learned. So yeah, uh, so I've, I've put my uh, card stock inside to protect the other side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my, uh, let's use a smaller gel plate for now. Put the big boy to the side. What I've done is I have pre-prepared a template, a very, very fancy template, as you can see. So it's basically some, uh, card stock and I took a dinner plate and I cut out a circle. So you don't necessarily have to do this. If you want to, uh, like I did with this bag, what you can do is you can just use some uh, paper tape and some plastic bags and just create like a crease at the bottom of your tote bag um, or if you wanted to, you could print the whole thing, go crazy, have fun. Uh, but I just wanted to show you guys that if you like the more cleaner kind of look, then uh, you can sort of tape off one edge and just have like printing done on the bottom half of the tote bag. So if that kind of makes sense. So we're going to be doing like a circle print like I did here. So I'll show you, let me just put this back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my very fancy template uh, just where I want it. And I have some, some painters tape on around the edges already, just to keep it in, in place. And if you're concerned, you can put like how use like a bigger piece of paper or you could add some plastic bags around the edges so that you know you're not getting any more paint somewhere where you don't want it so let me just make sure that i am in in you i am perfect so i'm just going to shift this a little bit here so that i can bring my gel plate here so that you can watch me do my gel painting as well. Whoops. Chucking things a little bit. Let me put a piece of paper underneath. Now I've got a nice clean surface underneath so that you can see what's happening. Okay. So what I'm going to be doing is what you can do is I'm going to be mixing my paints directly on the gel plate. But if you want, you can use some disposable uh, cups and mix your uh, fabric medium with your paint in a cup if you want to. 
Um, but I am going to mix it directly on the plate itself. Hey, Tanya, did you notice if there was um, any difference in the thickness of the cotton for the canvas bags? Any, any thickness? What, what does that mean? Sorry. Like the, sorry, the turnout of the gel print. Did you notice like if it was thicker or if it was on the thinner side, if it would turn out different or if there was different things you had to do for it? You mean depending on how thick the, 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 uh, the fabric was. Well, that's, that's the thing is, is, is that there will be some fabrics which will absorb the paint a lot more. And there will be some fabrics where the paint will just sit on the surface. So I would again suggest doing like a test run first. Uh, because different paints will react in different ways in different countries. And we will also depend on which way your cat is facing as well. Gel printing is an unpredictable process. And that unpredictability can actually be uh, fun to work with and quite liberating as well, because it stops you from overthinking the process. So according to the instructions, the ratio with the color is one is to one. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking a soft, uh, the other very fancy tool, I'm just using an old paintbrush and I'm using the other side of it just to mix my paint in. And at this moment, it does look a little bit milky and scary, but don't worry, it's, it's basically transparent it won't affect the color quality because once it dries, it's going to be true to whatever color you use. All right. Uh, questions? Anyone? Questions? There's no questions at the moment, but there's a color combo request for fuchsia, yellow, um, and a turquoise slash teal. Oh, okay. Maybe we can, that's the colors that we can use on here. So fuchsia, turquoise, and yellow. Okay, that's, that's very pretty. That yeah. actually kind of sounds like the colors that Marsha and I like using as well. Yeah, Marsha's laughing. So I, I, you can't really see off the side, but I'm using a braying off the excess paint onto a scrap piece of paper. So I can use that for, uh, you know, more collage work as well. So I've got some good old bubble wrap. Let's start with bubble wrap. What I'm going to do is I am just placing it on there, like so. And I don't know if you can see that some of the paint, the, the texture of the bubble wrap has transferred onto the gel plate. Now I've still got some of this juiciness of that wet paint on there. I'm just going to stamp it on here as well, because that's going to give me some extra grunge and some extra layers as well. Now I'm going to pick up my gel tape. And what you want to do is if you're, if you're bothered about getting paint on your hands, then you can use gloves or you can use like a, a large uh, clear click block, or you can use an old DVD case and basically use your gel plate as a stamp. And what I've also found is that when I mix my uh, fabric medium with my uh, acrylic paint, it makes the paint last, like it extends the paint a little bit more, if that kind of makes sense, it doesn't dry as quickly. So I am just going to, where shall we smash this down? Let's stamp it like so. So what is the paint to medium ratio? So it depends on the brand. The brand that I'm using is the Liquitex one. So uh, they suggest one is to one. So let's see what this looks like. Oh, hello. 
And another thing what you might find is that you might need to use a little bit more paint than you would with paper, if that kind of makes sense. Uh, your design will pick up the texture of the fabric. This is canvas. This is cotton canvas that I'm working on. So I, I, I can't lift it up to the camera right now um, because I will probably risk chucking everything on the floor and on myself, but I will show you towards the end what the texture looks like. So that's one print on there done. Um, so I've still got some wet paint on there. Let's pull that so that we can more colors on there. So with it, let's use like a turquoise teal kind of color next. That was the request, wasn't it? And then we'll do a magenta and a yellow. That was the request. So this is so waste not want not. I've got a, a collage done and it's also lifted up some of the old paint from the first print as well. So I can use this in more collages. Uh, I'm just looking at the questions. Is anything holding down your template? Yes, I have uh, tape along the edges here as well uh, because I'm, I'm a messy girl and I am not ashamed to admit that. Well, you can see already the chaos that's happening. Um, uh, this is canvas paper as opposed to smooth cotton. Yes, yes, you can. But you, with canvas, because of the weave of the fabric, uh, you will still get some texture. And if you use more paint, then uh, there's a danger of the paint seeping onto the other side or oozing underneath your stencil design or but it's 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 a lot about playing. You have to you have to play with what whatever materials you have, and it will depend on you know, again, what how dry your the weather is where you are, or you know, which way that you. It's it's just it can be unpredictable, which some people do find frustrating, but. Like I said, oh, so I didn't mix my uh, fabric medium today. Let's start again, shall we? So like I said, do as I do as I say, not as I do. But this is not a waste because we are going to use that for some collage material. So I'm just gonna lift some of that up going to do some mixing as well. So again, mixing it to one is to one ratio. So I've got a, a blob, very technical term, a blob of the Liquitex fabric medium. And the paints that I'm using are the uh, DecoArt Americana Premium. And this is the, this is one of my favorite colors. It's Quinna. Quinacridone magenta. I honestly should know how to pronounce that by now. But do you know what? It's a pretty pink. And we love it. And again, when you mix them, it kind of looks milky, but don't be scared. It's just the nature of the medium itself. Once it dries, the paint will be true to color. Might have a bit too much paint on there, but that's okay. So what design should we do next then? I'm just gonna bring my, put the access bare paint on to my paper. And let's just use these uh, these are some of my favorite things to use as masks. I'm just gonna stick them on. And because the, the paint is still wet, they're going to stay on the gel plate when I pick it up. So basically I am 
a big fan of uh, negative space in my art. Um, do I want to do something else on top? I do actually. So I'm just going to add in a little bit more texture onto it and use some food packaging. So this is just some foam food packaging that I have that I'm going to press on. Just to make it a little bit more interesting. You could use bubble wrap as well. I may have mentioned this in, in uh, class before as well, is that pretty soon you will have a, a husband or a partner who will have to ask you every time you need to throw something away. So I'm just making sure that the uh, masks are sticking on. If you wanted to, you could place the mask. It would be better to place the mask on the uh, canvas. That would have been a better thing to do. But let's try this. Oh, it worked. Is that magenta, glossy, matte, or satin? Yes, adds. As Marcia said, it would be more satin. It's like a semi kind of in between kind of color. So let's see what this turns out like. Oh, I like, like how that, that outline looks. So you've got that negative space from where the stencils were. Do I want to restamp that? Actually, let's do that. And I don't want to get any paint on here. So I'm just going to mask it off with just some more paper so that I don't get it on the outside of my stencil. Yes. Yes, Henry, our poor long suffering partners. Any tips on image transfers with gel pla jelly plate? Well, if you, Diona, if you visit uh, the Michael's YouTube channel, Birgit did a whole class on uh, image transfers, I believe. Um, Liz or Marsha might be able to find that uh, class, but we do have a lot of um, material available and tutorials available on our own blog as well as on our YouTube channel. It's a, it's, it's again such a uh, unpredictable process that you have to practice with whatever materials you have, image transfers. Because if I start talking about image transfers right now, this, that's all we're going to be talking about because there's so many things that you have to uh, consider and think about and mediums to use uh, when you're doing image transfers. Excuse me, I do need to sit down. Okay, so again, uh, so the request was magenta. Uh, we'll do the tealy blue kind of color last. So I've just uh, used some fabric medium and the yellow, which is called primary yellow. And again, all paints, paints that I'm using are the Deco Art Americana Premium. But you can use any acrylic paint that you have. All you need is fabric medium uh, to print on fabric. And if you don't plan on washing, uh, whatever surface you're printing on, then you can go ahead and try uh, printing with uh, just acrylic paint as well. I just find that it just it just flows nicer, if that kind of makes sense, and it sits better on the fabric if you use the fabric medium. But that's that's personal preference as well. 
So this my my collage paper is actually turning into something really pretty. Loving these color combinations, whoever suggested this. But like I said before, me and Marsha tend to, and also Bagit, who's also our fellow brand ambassador, we tend to use these color combinations a lot. Um, hey, Danya, just another quick question. Yep. Could you just use fabric print and not mix it with the medium? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. But as I mentioned uh, earlier, just be, make sure that you're not buying uh, the puffy fabric paints uh, because those are also available on the Michaels website. And I'm not sure if they would spread as well on a gel plate, if that kind of makes sense. So just, just make sure that you're using the non-puffy kind of fabric paints. But this is for someone like me who doesn't have that much space um, and I like to have limited supplies. So I don't really want to invest in more fabric paints, but if you plan on doing this a lot, or if you just, you know, enjoy collecting, then go ahead and buy fabric paints, definitely. This is just an alternative um, that I have to show you guys, you know, you can use your own acrylic paints. So while I've been waffling on, the, the paint is actually still wet. So the fabric medium actually extends the, uh, the wetness power <laughs> of the acrylic paint, if that kind of makes sense. So I'm using a, a, a little texture plate that I made myself. So I bought some inexpensive uh, wooden alphabets. You can use uh, chipboard alphabets and I've stuck it down on a piece of cardboard and I've created my own texture plate. And I'm gonna use that to create some texture on my wet paint. So I don't know if you can see, but that has left some delicious patterns on, on the gel plate and that's still wet. And let's do some stamping, which okay, should we do that? And I'm overlapping some of the colors a bit as well. Uh, you don't have to use as many colors as I am. You don't have to use like all the colors that are in the Skittles packet either. You can use muted colors. You can stick to monochromatic schemes. You can just do a black and white one. That can be really striking to do as well. Um, it's just, we had a warm winter over here and it's getting colder now. It actually snowed today for the first time. Uh, and it's kind of colder here. The days are darker and grayer and I just feel the need to have some color. Uh, so I've just done some stamping on there uh, with the gel plate and there's still some paint on there and I'm just gonna lift some of that with my scrap paper, which I can, you know, I'm just going to chop them up and use them, cut little die cut little heart shapes with them, uh, just cut out cards with them as well. Like I did a whole bunch of Christmas cards, just using gel prints. All I did was I cut them up into, so that they fit on an A4 card and just printed out a, a sentiment, you can stamp them and just sent them a whole load out to my neighbors. So now we need to do some filling in. How much time do we have? 20 minutes, my goodness. Uh, so we wanted to do some, let's do some, some tealy cyan kind of color because this is, I love this color so much. So this is cobalt teal hue, teal hue. And again, this is as much to myself as it is, is for you guys. Don't forget to mix, but you can pre-mix your mediums uh, if you want to, you know, because the gel printing process is so organic and you're sort of quickly switching back and forth between colors and, you know, you want to try out this or what does that look like as a gel print 
I want to try that. So you could just mix your, pre-mix your paints and have them ready in small empty jars as well, in some kind of airtight container if you wanted to, just ready to use whenever you need it. Okay. So we, uh, let's use the mini tools then shall we? And let me smash some of that color on there. And if you wanted to, you could, you know, get some of that paint, like slight paint leftover onto your fabric as well, because it just creates a little bit of uh, visual noise. And it just makes a print more interesting and brings the whole thing together kind of as well. So I'm just using uh, one of the mini tools. Uh, cardstock, yes, I'm using cardstock. This is just cardstock. But if you wanted to use something a bit more durable, you can use uh, some, uh, plastic sheets as well. You don't, it doesn't have to be a circle. You can draw, a, you cut out like a heart shape or a star, or you could just mask off a, a square or a rectangle with some tape as well. I mean, it's, you're limited by your imagination, I would think. I mean, the possibilities are absolutely endless. Just have a play, have a play. You don't have to overthink the process or you know think about the design. Just find some fabric, get some paint and have fun and try something new. That's always what I, I love doing. It's just, I just love trying new things. And I used to do a lot of block printing before. So I just thought, why can't you do some gel printing on fabric as well? So I want to fill in that spot and that spot. So I'm not going to press the whole gel plate on there. So I'm just going to mask it off that area because I don't want to get it somewhere where I don't want it. So let's just press it on that part just partially. So I'm basically using my gel plate as a stamp. So I've got some on there and then I want to fill in that corner there. So my hands are getting messy, but I am happy. So I would say mission accomplished. So I'm just filling in any spots that I feel I need to add more paint too. Should we do some hair as well? Let's do some hair as well, because I think that will make it look really interesting. Oh, yes. Do we need to add any more? No, I think we're good. And then what you can do is, what I like doing is, I like to pick up some of the paint and just go in and just add some additional shading as well. And what you can do is you can even lift it up with some of this, your brayer as well, just to make the edges a bit sharper as well, because the, you've got some white areas, like negative spaces on some of these uh, edges. And I want, the, the circle to be quite crisp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some black as well as white design elements on to my design. 
you can continue doing doing it with your gel plate, but I'm just gonna do it by hand. You can use a brush or you can use your fingers. Uh, I quite like using like a, a stencil as a kind of a pencil, not a stencil, a pencil as a kind of dotting tool as well. So uh, I'm just looking at Liz, are there any questions, hon? There was a question from earlier asking if you can use acrylic paint on a straw hat. Uh, I think you can pretty much paint anything that sits still long enough for you to paint on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know how durable it would be because I am not an expert on, I don't have experience with painting on straw. Right. Maybe it needs like a sealant of some sort too, I would yeah. think. Yeah. But yeah. And There's another question. Yep. Oops, sorry, go ahead. Yep. No, go ahead with the question. Okay. There's another question asked What if your cotton fabric is wet when you stamp the paint on it? Does that give a watercolor, in parentheses, blurry paint effect on the fabric? It, it would take a lot of wetness for it to give a watercolor kind of effect. Okay. And I can see Marsha, Marsha agrees with me. <laughs> She's nodding. <laughs> you have you have different kinds of uh, fabric paints and you can uh, get one that is mo more of, gives more of a watercolor effect, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it depends on how, how thick your paint is or the technical term is how vis viscous, the viscosity of your paint as well. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm just taking, doing some figure, finger painting because finger painting is fun. Uh, and I just need an excuse to get my hands messy. And I'm using uh, some sequin waste as a stencil just to get some more, uh, like interesting details on there. Can you use glitter paint? Uh, yes, yes you can. But uh, I think you need to, it depends on manufacturer to manufacturer. Some of them might not stick so well, if that kind of makes sense. And also talking about sealants, uh, I was reminded by uh, Liz's question, was that you, what you can do is you can seal this afterwards as well. You can use like a, uh, you can even use matte medium to seal your fabric design as well. Uh, I don't think it would be machine washable if you use matte medium, but you could probably use the fabric medium to seal it as well. You can get sprays as well to seal your fabric. Um, again, there's different brands out there and I would highly recommend that you have a look on the Michael website and look at different uh, fabric sealing options as well. So that will make your design a lot more durable as well, if that kind of makes sense. Where do you get the sequin waste? Is this um, sequin waste? Is, is this something like really inexpensive that I got from a kids from the kids section? Uh, uh, like the kids arts and crafts section. You know, you get those really giant kits with with all sorts of supplies in them. Sometimes you get sequin waste in them. It's just something that's really nice to have to make the, all these tiny dots. I like tiny dots. You can't go wrong with tiny dots. Yes, you can use Mod Podge for fabrics for durability as well. That's the point. Mod Podge for fabrics that's available on the Michaels website. Another question, Tanya, have you ever used distressed inks on the jelly plate for a very muted effect or watercolor-like effect? Uh, you mean on fabric? It doesn't specify. Well, yeah, yeah. I think so. yeah. You can use uh, whatever mediums you have. You can use distress ink on uh, gel plate as well. Distress ink is dye-based, so do keep in mind that it will bead up on the surface of your gel plate. Um, distress oxides, on the other hand, they're pigment-based and they, in my humble opinion, sit a lot better on a gel plate. 
Um, but with Distress Inks as well, uh, you get some really interesting effects um, as well. If you're going for like a background, for example, if you wanted to do a stamp background and you wanted like a watercolory kind of effect, then you could dab your ink directly onto your plate. You could spritz it really lightly with water to activate it. And then there's all sorts of fun stuff that you can do. Again, I would recommend checking out our blog as well as our Instagram as well. And my uh, my fellow brand ambassador, Marsha, and I and Birgit, we do a ton of content on our own Instagram uh, channels as well. My Instagram uh, handle is linked here in the bottom corner. And Marsha's handle is at Marsha Walk as well. But definitely check out the uh, Jellyat's Instagram as well. So because a lot of our videos get shared on there too. Uh, there's a ton of inspiration out there. Like anything that you can think of, you can print on it. Anything that doesn't move, you can print on it. The only things, again, just be really careful with your gel plates that you're not using any heat on it if you want it to last. Uh, that you are not using anything sharp on it because if you get like a cut on it then it's you're not it's not going to be able to you know you're not going to be able to fix it it will still be usable but that mark will be there forever some of my gel plates are probably well over 10 years old and they look well loved but they still work they still work because i've looked after them and if you wanted to give your uh, gel plate some uh, a deep clean, then I would suggest uh, taking, what you can do is what I'm gonna do afterwards when I'm done is I'm going to get all the wet paint off. I'm going to clean it with some water and a microfiber cloth. And uh, then if I feel like it needs more of a clean, then I'm just gonna put some drops of baby oil on here uh, maybe let it sit there for a couple of minutes and then wipe it off because that's kind of like conditioning your gel plate as well. So now uh, the moment of truth, everyone. Let's see. Let's see what the design looks like because we're running out of time and I don't want to keep you. And I just wanted to say thank you everyone so much. So very much. This was such a lovely class to be with. Everyone was so interactive and asking questions and having fun. And I really, really appreciate every single one of you being here. Ta -da! The color combo turned out amazing. It looks great. Not bad. Let me just put this aside because this is wet. I don't want to ruin my my bag and I'm just going to check uh, see so it was it was worth me putting the the barrier underneath because some of the paint has definitely seeped through so it was worth me putting that in there so now what you can do is you can seal this with the Mod Podge uh, fabric medium uh, Mod Podge uh, fabric sealer, if you wanted to use that. Uh, if you wanted to, you could add some stitching on here as well. Um, some beadwork, leave it as is. Give it to friends, keep it for yourself. Sell it as well, something perfect for craft flares. I'm just gonna switch my camera around and just, just a final one. If there's any questions or anyone has, uh, hey, Tanya, there was one more question. Yes. Have you ever used floating medium mixed with acrylic paint on a jelly plate for fabric printing? I bought my floating medium folk art brand from Michaels. I use it to dilute my fabric paint to use on fabric. Oh, are you floating medium by floating medium? Do you mean? like marbling 
What like what a marbling marbling? I I don't have experience using that. Um, today we've been primarily talking about gel printing, if that kind of makes sense. And we've we've been focusing more on um, uh, we've been focusing more on acrylic paints today. I'm really sorry. Uh, I can't answer that question, mm -hmm. but I would suggest uh, getting in touch with support at Michael's and maybe somebody might be able to. I can tell you something. It's a blender. It's used to blend paint. So it's it's an extender or a retarder and you can totally use it on the gel printing plate to make your um, paint more fluid. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm going to make a note of that actually. Because that sounds very interesting. I'm just going to make a note of that floating medium. Something new to try. Thank you to whoever meant us about that. Um, but you guys, I just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who joined. And I hope that you are well and safe wherever you are. Uh, so this was a jelly arts class. And what we did today was we printed on fabric. And uh, if you tuned in late, the replay of this will be going up on the Michael's YouTube channel uh, within 48 hours, sometimes quicker. But if you have any questions, uh, just uh, message us directly on at Jelly Arts as well. And have a wonderful, wonderful day, evening, morning, wherever you are. Take care, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye.